Welcome back to having lessons. You've just been doing basically revision. Okay, so uh, we're going to look at Ohm's law today. So this has to do with electric circuits. Ohm's law applies to specific components, only those components that are considered ohmic components. Okay, um, and Ohm's law says that the current through a component is directly proportional to the potential difference over that component and is inversely proportional to the resistance of that component. Now on your worksheet, this is missing. You need to please add it. It is part of the definition at a constant temperature. Okay, it's very important that you include that this is only true for if your temperature remains constant. Okay, so a lot of words, but basically, mathematically, what this means is that we've, we've seen these words, right? We've seen current, we've seen potential difference, we've seen resistance, and we know that we know what directly proportional and inversely proportional means, I'm hoping. We should know that. Okay, so let's look at what this means. Current through a component is directly proportional to the potential difference. Okay, so that means that. And it also says that the current is inversely proportional to the resistance. So remember, for inverse proportion, we just put the resistance at the bottom of a fraction. Okay, so current is directly proportional to potential difference and inversely proportional to resistance. So we can take all of this information and turn it into one equation. We can say that current and potential difference at the top and resistance at the bottom have a mathematical relationship. Okay, current is equal to potential difference over resistance. Ohm's law, however, on your formula sheet is given to you as this rearranged. So the V is um, isolated. So they multiplied R across. And this is how Ohm's law will look on your formula sheet. V equals IR. Okay where V is potential difference, so you've seen these already, what the, what the symbols are and what the units are, but let's just complete it again. V is potential dif <clears throat> difference, okay, and that is measured in volts. I, this is the current, and this is measured in amps, and R, this is the resistance, and this is measured in ohms, which looks kind of like upside down horseshoe, Greek letter, another Greek letter. Okay, omega. Okay, so that is Ohm's law. Um, graphically, occasionally, especially in grade 11 or 12, they might ask you graphically, what does this look like? Okay, you get that from this. So remember in the first few, uh, okay, grade 10s, remember in the first few lessons of the year, we looked at this, and grade 11s, we looked at this. <sighs> but halfway through term one, is how inverse and direct direct proportion relationships look graphically. So if we were to graph current versus potential difference, okay, for an ohmic component, for something that obeyed Ohm's law, we would have, remember if you've got a direct proportional relationship, you're going to have a straight line graph. Whee, that's there. There we go. You'll have a straight line graph. And if you plot two things that are inversely proportional, so if we look at something where we change the resistance, how will it affect the current? It will have an inversely proportional relationship. So your resistance will de sorry, your current will decrease as you increase your resistance. Okay, so that's what it looks like graphically. So this is basically the theory. Um, all you really need to be able to do is quote what Ohm's law says. Um, you need to know how to apply this equation, which I will still show you. And you need to be able to recognize graphically what Ohm's law says, basically. Okay, so they love to ask questions sort of like this. They'll give you a graph. They'll say, this is current. This is potential difference. I do an experiment with two different wires, okay? Um, and with my first wire, I get a graph that looks like this from wire A. And my second wire, I get a graph like this with wire B. Which wire is an ohmic wire? Basically, which wire follows Ohm's law? Well, we know Ohm's law, current and potential difference are directly proportional, which means I should have a straight line. So A would be the wire that follows Ohm's law. B is some other wire that doesn't follow Ohm's law. Um, 
yeah, so that's it for the theory. so i'm going to pause you there, erase, and then show you how we're actually going to apply ohm's laws formula okay guys, so when we use ohm's law, um, just like everything in physics you write down the formula first because it's worth a mark then you substitute in your values making sure that they have the correct units remember for resistance it's ohms for potential difference it's volts for um, current it's amps okay and then you solve your equation now the only really tricky thing here is making sure you know what it is you know if you know what i mean so in the first example they're really lovely they say we need to determine the resistance Okay, so they're asking for R, determine the resistance of a light bulb that has a potential difference of 12 volts. So they've told us that the potential difference is 12 volts. So they've given us V, well, 4 amps of current flow through it. So this 4 amps is our I. Now they're not always going to spell it out for you like this. Okay, I, they could have just said, determine the resistance of a 12 volt light bulb with four amps. Okay, they haven't told you which one is potential difference and which one is current. The way you would recognize it then is from the units. Okay, as soon as you see a V, you know it's potential difference. As soon as you see it's A, you know it's current. Okay, so how we solve this, we write the formula. So we want to link V, I, and R. Beautiful, we use Ohm's law. Potential difference is equal to current times resistance. We substitute in what we know, making sure the units are correct. 12, those are the correct units. Current, 4 amps, that is the correct units. And resistance is what we're after. And to solve for R here, we would then divide both sides by 4. Hey? Oopsie, sorry. Okay, so we find out that for question 1, the resistance of this light bulb would be 3 ohms. Okay, and that's it. It's not that tricky. Okay, so there's question 1. I'm going to pause your arrays and we can do question 2. Okay guys, here's our second question. We are considering the circuit below. They tell us that the battery has a terminal potential difference of 25 volts. Just going to pause there. Terminal potential difference just means the potential difference across the terminals of a battery. Okay, so whenever you see terminal potential difference, it basically means if I were to connect a voltmeter across my battery, that's the voltage that I would read. Okay, so it's almost the same thing as saying the potential difference of the entire circuit because the energy supplied by the battery is just enough energy to get our electrons all the way around the circuit. Okay, so terminal potential difference is the potential difference of the battery, which is basically saying the, the total potential difference needed for the whole circuit. Okay, and um, let's actually just write that down. Okay, so terminal potential difference is total potential difference needed for whole circuits. Okay, then they also say that the bulb, that's this guy remember, has a resistance of 15 ohms. Let's actually write this down. So my bulb has a resistance of 15 ohms. My terminal potential difference is 25 volts, which means I need 25 volts for the whole circuit. And the bulb has, okay, and the bulb's got a 15 ohm resistance, and we need to determine the reading on the ammeter. Okay, so now you need to remember what an ammeter does. Ammeter measures current. So they're asking what is the current at this point in the circuit. Now, we haven't got there yet, but you should remember this from grade eight to nine. I know you do this in NS and in technology. When you have a series circuit, which is what this is, okay? Series means there's no points where your wires branch, which means your current must Split, okay, that's there's nowhere where that's happening. So this is a series circuit. In a series circuit, the current at the ammeter is the same as the current anywhere else in the circuit. Okay, so whatever our ammeter reads, it'll be the same as the current going through the light bulb. It'll be the same as the current going through the battery. Okay. Now, in addition to that, the the potential difference supplied by the battery, that energy, that voltage, is in this case, the only thing our current needs to get through is the bulb, right? Ammeter poses negligible resistance, basically no resistance. So no energy will be used up going through an ammeter. We don't count it even as a component. Not in theory. In real life, it does a little bit. But in theory, we only look at bulbs and resistors as being actual components. Okay, so the only components our current has to get through is this bulb. 
which means all 25 volts, all of that energy being supplied by the battery is being supplied to get our current through this resistor. Okay, so that actually tells us that this 15 ohm resistor has a potential difference of 25 volts. Okay, because all of that energy is going to be used here. And the current through the ammeter is the same amount of current as the current through the bulb. Okay, so that means I have my resistance at my bulb, I have my potential difference at my bulb, I want to work out my current at my bulb. So we, that's the way you deal with these scenarios. You link everything to one component, okay? You move it all to one place and you do Ohm's law at that place. So I'm looking here at this bulb, I know the resistance, I know the potential difference, I want the current. So we're using Ohm's law, V equals I times R, and we sub in and solve. So potential difference is 25 volts, current is what we are looking for, and resistance is 15 ohms. Okay, so to get the, uh, yeah, to get the current by itself, we would divide both sides by 15. And 25 divided by 15 is 1,67. So we find that the current, let's make that look more like an I, it's like a 1, sorry, that's an I. Okay, the current is equal to 1,67 amps. Okay, and that's all there is to this. It's basically write the formula, substitute in, and solve. Um, we're still going to get to series circuits. Don't stress, you don't have anything like this in your actual exercise to do. We will see things like that tomorrow though. Okay, good, don't worry, I'll explain it all to you tomorrow.